Hey friends, um, welcome to June, yay! I apologize I didn't get May's readings done. Some of you were kind of like sending emails or leaving comments on different videos saying, what the fudge, where is May? Um, and if you follow on the Facebook page, that's a better place to keep updated with what's going on. I'm going to make a video about, um, you know, if, for those of you who have followed me for a long time, you know that I used to be super, super consistent and like ahead of the game. Um, but the last like year and a half to two years has been complete upheaval and like just crazy shit in my life. So I'm going to make a video about that later because there's like a lot of spiritual like lessons and things in that that a lot of people will benefit from, including um, like, you know, how to predict and navigate your way through different things that come up if you were to read your own tarot cards and like, anyway whatever. The thing I wanted to say before we started our reading is that moving forward, like after June, yeah, I would say like probably about August of this year, everything, all the ducks should be in a row and things will get back on track so you can look forward to that. Uh, but in advance of that, I wanted to let you know, for those of you who are intending to purchase um, video readings, throughout like the first two weeks of June, there might be a delay in those. I um, am having a nose surgery, my nose is broken and it's causing sinus infections a lot. So I'll we'll have like this big thing on my face. And so um, like a little, uh, what do they call that, a splint? And then maybe some black eyes after that. So I don't know how up for video reading I'm going to be uh, straight out the gate. But I will be keeping on top of email readings and phone readings. So there's that. Um, now, this month, what the reading looks like for you guys is what you can expect in work with your money. Because sometimes those are related, sometimes they're not. In your love life, whether you're single, coupled, or in an on-again, off-again relationship, like an undefined relationship. Maybe it's new and it's not Facebook official. Maybe, um, you know, you're polyamorous. Maybe you're the other woman in a uh, relationship or, I guess, the other man, you know, whatever. Maybe it's a sugar daddy situation or a, a sugar baby situation. What do they call it when the guy, leave it in the comments if you know, when the guy, is it a kept man? If it's the dude that has a sugar mama? Anyway, yeah, if you know, let me know because I'm curious. And then we're also going to be looking at, you know, just kind of socially, like what do your relationships look like or what do you need to be aware of for this month, um, whether that is friends or family kind of situations. We're going to talk about your lucky day, um, which chakras you need to work on, what is your crystal of the month, uh, so many things in these readings this month. So um, let's just get started with it. Welcome to June, Aries. So in some of the cards that I pulled from different decks, um, I'm kind of just wondering like if you've just been through it, you know, over the last year, over recent years, and now it's all kind of just like, oh fuck, changes need to be made. Um, so we're going to just start there and deviate a little bit from the format that we started for other signs. Um, if you are interested primarily in the love portion, check out your moon sign as well. And if you're focused on like work money stuff, then I would look at my rising sign. Um, but generally, we'll just say for Aries, okay, some things ended. Some things, you know, ended up hurting probably when they ended, whether we lost a job, whether we lost a relationship, whether we lost a close friend. Um, it's not necessarily about loss. It's just more like things have changed or agreements are different now. And so what they're saying is like self-care is super important right now. And any deep bonds and connections that we have to other people will definitely help us through this. And this doesn't necessarily even need to be to other people. This could be your connection to the spirit world, you know, to your faith. Um, but those things that maybe they were temporarily broken, um, and that's maybe what led to this time where things really changed and got kind of yanked away, um, we want to come back to the things that really support us and give us a lot of strength. So I'm not surprised this is kind of how it's starting because that was my sentiment based on the other cards. Um, what they're saying is like, instead of staying focused on what's right in front of you, 
try to remember that there are big, huge possibilities, infinite possibilities for what could happen next. The only thing is like you're not necessarily manifesting them. Now, some Aries might be, but many of you might just kind of be like, oh, fuck, <laughs> like it's hopeless, right? Like I can't even think about, you know, because, you know, my wife left me or because I lost my job or because, you know, whatever. I can't even think about what life is going to be like next. And so if you can't do that, think about how you want to feel next. And you might not think that you could ever feel that way again, especially in the case of a breakup or something like that. But you can. And actually, if you don't, um, if you can't imagine it, you know, I mean, maybe the universe has something even better than you imagined in store for you. So let's try to keep that faith and like, Keep our eyes open to new possibilities and things like that. So um, now I'm going to get to the basic part of the reading and then I'll uh, fill in the details as we go. But because I don't want to forget your chakra to focus on this month is your throat chakra. So it's about like, um, it's actually quite mental. It's about what we think about, but also like how we talk, what we speak and remembering that what we speak of about we bring about right what we think about we bring about so um keeping all of that in check keeping our um our communication positive and hopeful and like you know focused on possibilities instead of like what you can't do as well as um our mindset so anyway uh your lucky day of the month is the 12th just kidding just kidding that is libra's yours is the 26th of June and then um, we'll talk about your crystal of the month later so what's going on for you in work this month and they say this is exactly where we want to talk about um, you know having this childlike faith like we don't necessarily know how things are gonna play out um, let's say for example you were a doctor whose license got taken away and you can't practice medicine anymore so you're like what the fuck am I gonna do next right? Like it's all hopeless. Like I went to school for so long and I have all of these student loans and like for what? Um, but it doesn't mean that you some, that you can't consult somehow in a different way or um, clep out of like, you know, whatever and become like a nurse practitioner or like who knows? I mean, there's always a possibility. Maybe you'll become some sort of magical spiritual healer who has a greater understanding of metaphysics because you had to learn so much chemistry and stuff. Like who knows? The possibilities are only um, limited by the like limits you mentally put on it. Like we are only unable to create that which we can't imagine, right? Okay, so anyway, have a lot of faith. You don't have to know how things are going to work out, but just more that like youthful trust that things will work out, okay? They're saying, um, and just like being appreciative and celebrating the things that are going right, the things that don't suck, a gratitude journal would be wonderful for you this month in regards to your work life. Now, this isn't the case for everybody. Not everybody lost a job or not, any, not everybody had like some sort of work tragedy. And they're saying, um, but for those of you who did, you know that you like needed to hear that part. <laughs> but for the rest of you, they're saying, um, you know, whatever learning cycle or pattern is going on at work right now, it's not completely over yet. Um, I feel like maybe some of you have a need to figure out how to become more organized at work. Uh, or maybe some of you are not necessarily allowed to work as independently as you want to, but like you can reframe that way of thinking instead of like, oh man, it sucks that like I can't just like do this stuff on my own. Just like more, oh man, it's cool that there's a second set of eyes to make sure that things are correct or, you know, somebody to support me there or um, being really, patting yourself really a lot on the back when you do keep things super hyper organized that kind of an energy here. They're saying like, for the majority of Aries, there's not a tremendous amount of like, confidence and love and joy in the workplace. And so they're saying like, that might not go away very quickly, but um, hopefully as this reading progresses and then we get to those other cards from other decks at the end of the reading, um, that kind of brings everything full circle, those tips and tricks will really kind of help you get into the right vibe so that you can shift that. In regards to your money, they're saying we want you to look at things from a different perspective. You don't necessarily have to spiritualize your money as much as um, 
you know, other signs do, but you're not feeling tremendously confident and that might not change right away. So, um, you know, either, like I said, some of you might be underpaid right now and then others of you, maybe you just have too much debt. Maybe, you know, Aries, the sign of spontaneity, uh, built up a lot of credit card debt because you wanted to have fun and pay for it later. So they're saying things are a little bit more secure than you um, think they are. Okay, so if you're kind of like falling into panic mode, like you're actually pretty all right. Um, they're saying, though, if you fall into that panic mode, like you really shouldn't be. There, there are opportunities for you and maybe you're just not seeing them. Okay, you're not able to take them. I don't know if it's because, you know, like for example, with the metaphor I gave earlier, maybe you're um, a doctor and like then you don't have a license anymore. And so now you're like, well, I don't want to take this job as a phlebotomist that pays like $11 an hour. Like that seems like way below me or something like that. But, you know, um, I'm not saying jump on things like that. Like, but I am saying there are opportunities should you keep your mind open and your eyes open. So, you know, just pay attention because if you start looking at that and then, you know, kind of going down the internet rabbit hole, you might realize like, oh man, there's this other thing that I'm totally qualified to do. And I just have to take like a quick exam that I'll easily ace and then poof, you know, like this job is actually pretty okay and it pays pretty okay. Um, they're saying, you know, like in this mindset of like things just are not going to work out for me in regards to my money um, is not a good one and it's not going to serve you well. And so they're saying like try to just be like really happy for the things that are still okay that are still going right. And I mean, not every Aries is having like a really horrible time with money, but you know, you might beat yourself up for a gambling loss or, oh man, I spent too way too much money, you know, when I was drinking. So they're saying like, Let's get a little bit more excited about the possibilities and remember where like the possibilities are only limited by our own imagination. So, um, you know, if we're going to really embrace that fun, loving, spontaneous Aries energy, let's do it in a forward motion about what the future could hold. Right. Because um, that will help. Now, in regards to your love life, if you are single, they say um, big changes in regards to your uh, love life could be coming. You could find yourself coupled very, very quickly. They're saying that it might just like show up out of nowhere. And, um, you know, you might not be looking for it. You might not think it's the best time, but poof, there it is. And this could be a very stable and balanced relationship for you. Now, um, the reason, this is the thing about general readings that might not be for everybody, but it is going to be for at least somebody. And so then for the rest of you where that doesn't happen, they're just saying like, um, if you don't give to relationships, you certainly don't get back in relationships. So, you know, um, you're going to get out of dating or looking for a partner what you put into it. So if you're looking and, you know, you've really done the work to become a good partner, then what you will receive is a great partner. If you um, are looking and, you know, you maybe have quite a few areas to improve in order to become a good partner. You might get the kind of partner who also has a lot of area or room for growth. And so they're saying, um, for those of you who have like a lot of like relationship type of growth to do, you're going to want to take it slow. If you don't take it slow, um, well, then, you know, you might be hopeful. You might like, be excited to see what this ends up to be, but the truth is gonna hurt when it comes out really quickly and you guys might not end up wanting the same things. And so um, just keeping that in mind. For those of you who are coupled, they're saying ask your partner for support because you've got a lot of stuff that you're taking on and you know you're kind of like, well, I don't wanna burden my partner or um, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. But you've got like a lot of stuff going on right now and um, you could really use their help and I think they'd give it to you if you asked, but you're not even asking, you're not even letting them know and they're not aware and this actually damages your relationship because your partner is gonna feel like, you know what, if you really trusted me, if you really cared about me, you would be open with me. We would have better communication and you would allow me to help you because that's how I show you love. 
right? And so you're doing a disservice to your relationship if you're not doing that. They're saying you won't be disappointed with the result. So maybe you are hiding um, a struggle from your partner because you don't want to burden them or you don't want to stress them out. It's something that you usually would handle on your own so they don't have to deal with it or get stressed. But in this specific case, um, you tell them and they say their reaction initially might be like, oh, fuck, right? But they'll be happy that they got to work through this with you. It's actually a time to bond and grow closer, like going through hardships together. And this is the very Aries card. And they say, this is how you get to control the trajectory of your relationship. You know, do we bond and come closer together, like going through these hardships together? Or do we go separate, you know, and start to create this like distance between us and not get closer in our relationship and not strengthen it? Because I'm just trying to like handle it and control everything on my own. And maybe you're doing that out of love, but your partner is not going to perceive it that way. Um, in regards to those of you who are in undefined relationships, they say um, this is a good month for you to really think about what it is that you want, what it is you desire. They're saying it's not a good month to make any changes. Changes are going to occur naturally and probably for the better. But at least thinking about how you're feeling about this on again, off again relationship, this polyamorous relationship. Like, what is it that I truly feel about myself and about everybody involved? They're saying that um, you might feel a little bit defensive if somebody were to ask you how you felt or if somebody were to make a comment about um, how you're handling things. And they're saying, you know, if you feel defensive, I want you to remember for a second, you might be deceiving yourself about something, about what it is that you say you want. Maybe you say you want something and then somebody says, oh, well, you said you want this, but you're acting this way. So it seems to me like you don't. And your initial reaction might be like, oh, well, it sounds like you're projecting or you don't blah, blah, blah. But um, if it offends you, there's probably a little bit of truth to that somewhere, okay? Now, in regards to your social relationships in the month of June, they're saying that's where a lot of your happiness lies, where a lot of your joy is, with whether that's with friends, family, colleagues. They're saying um, you should probably be the person like inviting others to do things, like putting that idea out there, like, hey, what do you think about going to a baseball game? What do you think about going for a walk this week sometime? They're saying like you'll get a lot of emotional fulfillment from um, your social relationships and in ways that you typically don't. So a good focus on your friends would be very um, nice for you guys in the month of June. Your crystal of the month is the green calcite. And what this one does, I want you to see how this is like super, super different than other crystals because it almost looks wet all the time. It's kind of like clear. So, because there's so many green crystals, right? I just want to show you. See, look, there's like this one's green, this one's green. What else do I have in here? Um, you know, jade is green. So this is how you can tell if you have calcite or not. It, it almost looks kind of wet. Some of them will have white bands, some will have brown. Uh, anyway, what do you want this for? Correlates to the heart chakra, okay? Now, um, your chakra was the throat chakra, but there's a lot of heart healing that happens for you this month, which is probably why they selected this as your power crystal for the month. So this one helps you to be more positive. It helps you to connect to the spirit realm. It helps you with abundance, with more money, and it's also very product or, um, protective. So the abundance part is key if you're having those financial struggles and um, that positivity, as we talked about in a lot of areas, is important. This is going to help you to release anger and resentment huge things that you need to do. It helps you with rapid manifestation because once we can think about what we might want, then we can bring that into our reality, especially for those of you um, who are job searching or looking for partners, things like that. It helps you by clearing away old patterns, right? Like things that didn't work for us anymore. Like, hey, let's get rid of those. And, um, you know, especially if like you're a single Aries looking for love, awesome. This will heal the heart chakra a lot. This will balance out your emotions. It helps you to calm your mind. It improves your judgment and your memory. Because like I said, some of you are really a little bit too impulsive and making bad decisions historically. Um, it makes your immune system healthier, helps you to fight infections, so many other things. So you can get one from your local crystal shop. I showed you what it looks like so you will know if you have one. If you don't have one and you want me to mail you one, I can mail those out right away. And um, they come with a printout of all of the physical and, you know, other kind of uses, um, more than I mentioned, for this rock. And then also um, a video playlist on how to use them uh, to your advantage. So uh, other things I wanted to mention here. 
Your color energy of the month is jade. Now, um, you can use a jade crystal as well. Uh, I think I was going to show you one of those, right? So those are also green and heart chakra related, but also will bring you um, health and abundance. It's good for prosperity and luck, which maybe some of you kind of need this month. Um, the jade crystal energy, it inspires you to take action, okay? And the number here is like, okay, anything that is, because a three and a two is a five, okay? Anything that is disharmonious, that, you know, is painful or challenging right now, it kind of happened for a reason, all right? This was faded, and it's to help you kind of come into this, like, through change, positive state of being where everything is more balanced where you're going to be strong like a tree like you know as the trees with that are closest to heaven have like the, the deepest roots that like basically touch hell okay because otherwise they would blow over in the wind does that make sense so we have to go through these hardships in order to be um you know like to learn and to grow our spirit and all of this correlates to the heart chakra. So with this one, it will help you to feel um, and be more loving and nurturing towards yourself and towards other people and um, helps you to be more self-sufficient. It brings harmony, balance, releasing negativity, stimulating new ideas, making what seems complex um, more doable. So the affirmation is, I can do this, it's easy, the universe supports me and my goals and my dreams and it manifests them into physical reality. So like I said initially, like we are only limited by um, you know, our inability to imagine a better outcome, really. So if you can dream it, you can be it, you can achieve it, yeah? Okay, so um, other information here is ceremony. So rituals, mark the importance and passage of time. So having rituals, whether that's like a routine of prayer, whether it's like I'm going to take this much time um, and put it aside to, you know, listen to something that calms me down. Like I'm going to brush my teeth to a motivational YouTube video, like daily affirmations or um, you know, whatever, whatever your ritual is, they're like, these are important because you'll notice when you stop doing them, how different you feel. So like, what are the rituals that we have? And did you notice like over time that those made our lives better or worse? So for example, you could brush your teeth for two straight hours, right? And maybe that would, well, okay, so two straight hours is 120 minutes. And if you're supposed to brush your teeth um, for two minutes, well, let's just say you're supposed to brush your teeth once a day, but it's really twice a day, but otherwise my head with the math is going to get like really fucked up without a piece of paper. So, okay, is it better to brush your teeth for two straight hours, okay, 120 minutes, one time, or to do it over the course of 60 days for two minutes? Do you see what I mean? Where's the bigger benefit? It's in that ritual. It's in that routine. It's the consistent action of it. Just like within love, right? Like you can give the best birthday gift ever, but your partner isn't going to feel loved or your friend or whoever the gift is for that you're trying to impress. They're not going to really truly appreciate that and feel it weeks down the road. What they would actually feel a lot better about is if consistently you um, ask them how their day was, you know, that you're, that you put down your phone and you have a conversation with them, that you're, um, you know, consistently showing up to things on time that they ask you to be on time for. I mean, it's the consistent day-to-day -day actions, right? Uh, so that's the point. Rituals are going to be important to you. They're going to better your life and they'll help create this new stable foundation for you moving forward because this is all the color of the root chakra, um, which is the basis of how we grow and like achieve this like pure happiness um, point in our life. So they're saying um, there's a couple archangels involved here and the first one is Archangel Shamuel and they're saying open up that heart chakra. You really need to do that. And we know that because we have so many heart chakra kind of energies here. We had the jade color energy. 
we have the green calcite crystal. Um, we've got this shamuel guy right here in his pink little leotard thing with a star right on his heart. <laughs> and it's saying, thank you, Shamuel, for removing the barriers from around my heart. Now, um, there's something interesting I wanted to read to you. Shamuel's name means he who sees God, and he's the angel of love. His aura is pure white and ruby, and his purpose is to help us see opportunities to love. Um, when he shows up, he can signify, signify a soulmate bond or relationship, which I think was a possibility for some single Aries. Um, and he helps us to enjoy our loved ones and feel a sense of peace concerning our purpose, which is to be happy and fulfilled. Now, um, here's the thing. We have opportunities to um, show love, to be loved all the time. And we don't always take them. And sometimes that's because of a fear that we have. But if we take down, if we chip away at those barriers at our heart, maybe through consistent ritual routines, um, or maybe just like really focusing on that for the month of June, you know, um, we can't expect people to consistently give us love if we don't give it back out. And sometimes we're afraid to do that because we've been hurt right? But that fear isn't serving you. Because if you're going to continue to be afraid, then you're never going to continue, then you're never ever going to be um, fully feeling that love and joyful, like kind of happiness vibration, because you're resisting it, you're pushing it away. And so um, just something to keep in mind. And that might even have to do with how you feel about yourself, right? Like if I can't figure out how to really love myself, I'm not able to recognize when other people are showing me love, okay? So the other card that we have, the other archangel here is Archangel Raphael. And it says, thank you for shining your divine light upon my healthy body. Now you can use him, like imagine him um, placing his hands on your body and healing it, any parts that feel kind of icky. Um, but... You could also ask him to touch your heart, to heal that, to heal your mind, to heal um, your heart chakra as well. And the reason why I say that is because a healthy bodies will not, like you can't just have a healthy body if you don't have a healthy mind and a healthy spirit, a healthy soul, okay? If your soul is sick, if your soul is like really jacked up, your body is not going to cooperate with it. If your um, thought patterns, right? If you're thinking, if your mind is not super healthy, which might be a result of something you choose to do or not. It could be, you know, genetics. But the point is, is that it's not going to feel good in your body. Like this is why depression physically hurts people. It, because when, you know, maybe that is a chemical imbalance that something is not, um, you know, like the endorphins, the dopamine, the serotonin and all of that stuff is out of whack. And that's possibly not your fault. Okay. But the point is, is if those things do not come into balance, your body's going to feel like shit. You can't have like this body that is like really a um, pillar of health. <laughs> you know, everything's going awesome and then have a mind and soul that are completely jacked. It doesn't work that way. It just, you would be very, very challenging to find somebody who um, is very physically healthy. They might be fit. They might have like a very um, slender, toned type of body, but it's not really healthy. Like if you were to measure their vital signs, maybe their blood pressure is too high all the time or things like that. There's, there's something quite off, okay? But if you heal these things first, the mind and the heart and the soul, um, then the physical health comes a little bit easier for you. Um, this is why, you know, people can be too skinny or um, gain a lot of weight. They can lose it or gain a lot of it. Everybody's different and they handle stress differently, but in high stress situations. So um, something to keep in mind because that all starts either here or here. Now, um, the, one of the, there's two more cards I wanted to talk about. So this one, financial discipline, correlating again to the heart chakra. And so remember when I was talking about, like, maybe you thought like, hey, let's have a lot of fun and I'll worry about it later, catching up with you right now. But they're saying you can achieve stability a lot quicker than you think you can. It's about creating new routines and um, this all happened for a reason. It was faded. You had to learn some lessons in order to create new structures and routines for yourself. Um, 
So just keeping that in mind if that is a struggle for you right now. And then your final, like your kind of mantra for the month is, I see the world through the eyes of love and acceptance. Hmm. So can you love and accept others? Can you love and accept yourself? If you can't, let's work on it. All right. Um, all is well in my world. And if you can't believe that when you say it, you can say, I'm learning to believe and remember that all is well in my world, right? Because you're only limited by your inability to imagine something better and greater. Love you so much and I'll see you in July. Thanks so much for watching this video and getting all the way to the end of it. I really appreciate your support. If you are interested in other videos, click here. If you are interested in subscribing, go ahead and click here. Hit that notification bell so that you get alerted to when new videos come out and also when I do surprise live streams. And then if you're interested in winning a free 20 minute video uh, reading personally every month, go ahead and click right here. Mwah!